who ain't got jobs and a skint. Ah, oh, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Perhaps you don't see it, but it's there in every town across Britain. My fridge and my freezer is empty. Two tins of soup and that's about it. The town's hardest hit are the ones that have lost their old industries. In Grimsby, the fishing days were the glory days. It was just party, party, party time. All the time, everyone was happy, everyone had money. That was a living man. A brothel in every port. Worst hits the East Marsh, where the fishermen lived. Where the f There is no work. There is no work. It's left the young uns fighting for jobs. Everyone is doing something to make a bit of extra cash. And when work leaves, other things flood in. You have a brown bed six feet under you, yeah? or you've got a jail sentence hanging over your head. Get ready for it! But here in Grimsby, they're used to stormy seas. It takes a lot to pull them under. No matter how hard life gets, you've still got to try, try, try. Water bills. Water falls out of the sky. Should be free of charge. Look at the lovely suds. <laughs> And it's in the toughest of times that people show their greatest strengths. No, babe, you didn't have to rob half the entire f Wallace. Don't disrespect the f Queen. We're bloody English, aren't we? God save the Queen! Even when they're skinned. <laughs> Grimsby's a great town. And like anywhere, it takes all sorts. There's the rich, who are doing just fine. The hard up, who are just about scraping by. And then there are those, who are totally skint and have nout. We only really want about five pounds for it, but it's whether he's willing to give us the five pounds for it. If he don't, then we're stuck. I'll go get him. And when you've got no job, and you're totally skint, you do whatever you need to do, just to get by. We've got to be at least 15 DVDs in there. If that fucking sight passes up by him, <coughs> he'll give me a quid, maybe. Grimsby's East Marsh is one of the poorest spots in the country. And round here, there's plenty of places to sell or pawn your worldly goods. <laughs> fiver! Yes, fucking fiver. Bulls in. What you got to do today? What's the plan? Make some money. Ryan and his girlfriend Shaz are also strapped for cash today. Ryan's on electronic tag awaiting trial, so he's got to find legal ways to get by at the minute. I have put my phone on buy back, uh, lend some money, or whatever. So the only way you can get cash? Well, no, I could do it the fug way and go out and do some fucking crime and that, but with a tag around my ankle, they'll kind of be able to pin me to the fucking crime, so it's kind of, uh, that's a long shot, so I'd rather put my phone in for a couple of days and just deal with it. So what do you need the money for then? What the, fucking common stuff, gas, electric, fucking food, ganja, shit shave in the shower, then we'll go. Sony Xperia, so basically put my phone in, get paid my doll money, then go get my phone out. Quite complicated. All right, I better go put it in. <laughs> the gas is now on, because it's just fucking clicked. Now you've cloned your phone, how long will all this stuff last, last you? Well, it'll last me till my payday. Four days. But my dad's coming back with Fine, some... Fine, you have signed on. What? What time is it? Half one. Oh shit! I have signed on! I'm gonna sign on at one o'clock and I fucking missed my sign on date because I've had to fucking put my phone and that on buyback to fucking sort it all out. What happens if you don't sign on? If I don't sign on, I don't get my paid, then I don't get my phone back out the shop, then I get sanctioned and none of this happens. Fuck you, yeah, that. Finding jobs can be tough round here. And when you train for work on the high seas, it's not easy to adjust to work on dry land. I know what I'm doing at sea, and I get by there, because I know where I am. 
but you put me in a factory or something like that, I don't know where I am. Jeff is one of Grimsby's last fishermen, although he's been off work with a broken hand recently. He's staying with his fiancée, Becky, and he's getting restless. Do I look like him off uh, Miami Vice? <laughs> I want to go back to sea. That's all I want to do. That's all I've ever wanted to do, is go back to sea. We're going to get Jeffrey's passport, and then he's off away. Why do you need a passport to go back to work? Because it won't be in this country. Because this country has turned its back on fishermen. She don't want me to go back to sea. She likes me here. She likes fucking torturing me and things like that. What? Even if I'm in dock for a couple of hours, who's there with a bag of oranges, bananas, grab, oh, grabbing me, me? grabbing me in front of all my mates, oh, giving me a fucking so kiss and all that shit, shit aren't you? Yeah. Honest, <laughs> you're full of shit, aren't you? But actually, actually, yeah. I go like and get me some like yogurt and no some oranges from fucking Aston. Hey, sweetheart, nobody else gets it. She'll, she'll give me a kiss and she'll say, you fucking stink. <laughs> hey, second words. Well, obviously you stink. You're working with fucking fish, aren't you? You've got to be tough to be a fisherman, and that's still true of a lot of people on the East Marsh. They go their own way. The young'uns too. Right! You know, that's not over the park. There's only one place to hang out if you're a kid round here. The Shalom Youth Centre. It's run by the canon John Ellis, who lets the kids be kids under a watchful eye. No one disrespects any of the staff, because they're not really staff, they're more like friends. John's fucking sick. He's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> the fishermen used to say they take a boy to sea and bring him back a man. But nowadays, there's just a shalom. Oddly enough, adulthood is something you have to learn. You get 40-year-old, 50-year-old, 60-year-old, 70-year-old children yeah! running around the community. And they're a nightmare. They're still operating the same level as this lot. So what we do is we try to model adulthood. This is what an adult does. This is what an adult is. I reckon if the council turned around and said, shall you send a shutter, everybody would just go mad. And I reckon it would turn into a riot because it's, it's, it's what everybody's grown up with, what everybody needs to grow up with, I reckon, around here. If you aren't growing up with shall, you're growing up's been shit. If your growing up has been shit, then you can move on or be dragged down. And if you're going down, then drugs will certainly hurry things along. Oh, I'm jealous of the rare man. I have hair like that. Why not? Mine fell out. Cos I'm mad. A few weeks ago, Kaylee's life was a chaos of drugs and homelessness. <laughs> Crazy. Mentally disturbed. No, it just fell out because of um, silly stuff. Bro, why did it? No, seriously. Because of the hand cat. Why? Is that what that stuff does to you? Yeah. Does it, Kay? You've seen the doctor. And what's he said? <laughs> Stay off the drugs. I hear it, fell out. <laughs> Moving in with her mate, Corinne, has been a lifesaver for Kaylee. I'm going to pierce the fucking mouth shut. I am. Why? Because she fucking talks too much. Is it going to hurt? No, it will just go straight through. Oh, am I going to bleed? Listen, once I put it in, you've got to bathe it with salt water and that. Yeah, but am I going to bleed? No, you won't bleed. Get ready for it! What's this? <laughs> 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 oh, Come on, are you having it done yes. or not? Yes! Right. <laughs> Is it freezing? <laughs> Open your mouth. Yeah? Yeah. Hang on. Gonna wear it. There you go. There you go. Don't be playing with it. No, I won't. Or she'll fuck your mouth up. It should be all right, mine was. Where'd you learn to do that? I got mine done in jail.
No matter what you start in life, if you've no work and no money, then for some people crime starts to look like an option. Everyone is doing something to make a bit of extra cash. Everyone. I know, duh, 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 I'd say one, two, nine. There's nine dealers just round here. <coughs> and that's in the space of a two minute walk. You've got to have the money to be able to live a decent life. Because on the dole, it just don't pay for enough. In the past, Ryan's turned to crime when he's needed extra money. He's currently charged in connection with a violent street robbery and a burglary with ABH, committed over a year ago. Since then, he and Shaz have started to make a life together. But he's still facing a possible eight-year prison stretch. What will happen, Shaz, if Brian does go to prison? Same happens now, innit? I'll just go with him with his brother and that. Will you wait for him? Yeah, I'll just wait for him. I'm going to jail. What are you saying if? I ain't done no wrong, so there's no reason yeah. to go to jail. Hey, Drop a pin in any big town in Britain, and you'll find a patch where people are really struggling. In Grimsby, it's the East Marsh. And when you're skinned, it's best to keep yourself busy. What would the East Marsh in Grimsby be like without a slum? Crime rate would probably go. Because it's where all the kids are. If we went to Shalom, what would you be up to? Causing trouble. Really, would you? Probably. Why is that? Why would you cause trouble if there's nothing else to do? It's just a habit. It's not true, yeah? I swear, I will fucking move on. I'm straight to me up. <laughs> In an attempt to impress the courts, Ryan's been sticking to his tag, and his girlfriend Shaz is sticking by him, even though it means staying in seven nights a week. What do you think makes someone poor? Money, fucking having a rich money. family. Yeah, toys. growing up with everything. Have you seen it? They've got to have different shoes to walk into different rooms in some posh places. Yeah, and it? It's fucking pathetic. You've got to have about three, four different forks to eat different things with. And just use fucking hands, don't you, you fucking fork? Forks are fork, isn't it? God made us who we are. Deal with it. Could you imagine me with someone posh? None of the um, posh know what a real proper life is, do they? What would you guys class yourself as? What would you class? Middle class. <laughs> <laughs> We're not middle class. We're the bottom, aren't we? Middle class was like, at least I'm a plasma and... We're just normal, sane people. <laughs> aren't we? Normal couple just trying to get on with life. If I just wanted... Marry me. Decent house, enough money, um, decent job, basically just decent life. That's all, all I've ever wanted. I'm trying to like keep out of shit and that. All right, gorgeous. Running from the East Marsh down to the docks is Freeman Street, where the fishermen used to drink. It's not what it once was, mind. It used to be leather. Oh, it was paradise. All the pubs. Full. There was loads of pubs. Hardly any now. Not a lot of money about now. Jeff's been a Freeman Street regular since he started fishing 40 years ago. The boats couldn't get in the docks, could they? No. It was that fast. Yeah. yeah. Busting out the doors, they couldn't get in the pubs. They were stood on the streets, weren't they? Yeah. You get pissed as a fart. Dinner time, you're usually in bed. I mean, I bet the old man fucked it up half the fucking time. You didn't do, have, don't you? Didn't have a scene. Exactly. Exactly. The docks, could they? No. It was that fast. Yeah. Luckily, Jeff's girlfriend Becky is an old hand at dealing with drunken sailors. It's what my granddad did, it's what my uncles did. I said to him, you know, like, why do you have to get in this state? Like, you come home for about 24 hours, why do you have to get pissed out your brain for? They go out there, they lose the limbs, they go overboard, they don't come back, the ship sinks, the ship sets fire, they're dead. So in my eyes, then people are coming back 
getting pissed out of the face because I think it might be the last time that they do it. Then they come back out and do it all again. I've come in dock, looked out the portal, still seen the stones, and thought, fucking hell, nice one. We're going in. Oh, we thought we're going out. I've already been in for me 36 hours, do you know what I mean? Can't remember fuck all about it. If Freeman Street's where the pubs are, and the Shalom Youth Centre is where you'll find the kids, down another East Marsh Street, there's an altogether older kind of business going on. Prostitution. And it's been in my life from a young age. A very young age. It's the quickest and easiest way to get money. Other than committing crime. And I'm not doing that. Why don't you do crime? Why don't I do crime? Because I like my freedom too much. That's why. <laughs> and I'd be pretty shit at it. Why would you be? Because <laughs> I'd get caught. <laughs> I don't know how to be sly. Ryan's been on tag for more than 12 months now, and so far, it's been doing its job, keeping him out of trouble. Tag is, say, so many hours a day, you're not allowed out, and... How do you know if you're not sticking to it? Because that tag box and that, it's horrible. Can't stay out late, you can't go out on the weekends with mates and that. Can't do much. but. I'd rather be with all my friends and family than behind bars. Put it that way. You make your own life. And then choose how to run it. Booze has landed Jeff in trouble in the past. And while he's not at sea, he's most likely in the pub or round at Becky's with a cat. Come on. Becky's a single mum with four teenagers, and two of her boys are on the autistic spectrum. Kids break up on Friday. It costs you more money when they're off. Because you've got to, like, feed them, and like, they want to do stuff, don't they? Some kids do play out in the street, but... It's not safe for him, especially Kai and Aaron. They've never been able to go to the park on their own. Just in case Becky hasn't enough on her plate, Jeff's decided to quit drinking for a bit and has been staying in bed round of hers. You're old, man. Face it. You passed it. He's an has been. He was the best fisherman that walked Freeman Street, and now he's a has been. What a good fisherman. He's Freeman been Street. and gone. The best. When he's had a drink and he's laid in bed. Everyone I'm says one of the best, best fishermen that's well, gone out of this fucking port. There is sensible fishermen as well that don't drink. Have you ever been a sensible fisherman? <laughs> no, you haven't. You've never ever gone to sea sober. I have. I beg to You give have me. not. How long have you not um, been drinking? Two days. <laughs> two hours. <clears throat> no, but he's doing two days, but he's doing a two week drinking ban and then see how we go back to that. He won't last two weeks. Yes. Oh, unless if we just take away his money, then it will last fine. Yeah. I ain't got no money anyway, guys, so yeah. that's easy. No, he just stays in all the time. <laughs> Do people deserve a second chance in life if something goes wrong? Depends what they've done. Really, it is all down to what they've done. Really? Yeah. What are the things that you don't get a second chance for? Being a paedophile. No, if, if you have made a wrong time in your past about doing drugs and that, and you are trying to make a change, and you do deserve a second chance. What are you doing tonight, then? 
watching me soaps. I'm going to put my gym jams on, vodka and lemonade and watch me soaps. Probably fall asleep before the start, actually. I need some sleep. I'm cranky. Why haven't you slept? Because of the stress of my son's birthday coming up. Yeah. When he was living with me, we used to read a bedtime story and then we used to make a bedtime story up about Tractor Trump. And it had to have a good little girl and a naughty little boy and a tractor called Trump. And every night we'd make up a different story. But he'd only get that story if he was good. At least I know that with someone that's going to give him that love that they need. They're getting the love, attention and support that they need at that age. And I wasn't giving them that. I was just scatterbrained for the drugs. So I did the right thing. I know I did the right thing anyway. It's just hard to believe it. It's Valentine's Day tomorrow, and Ryan's planning a really special treat for Shaz. It's a big effort this for you, isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's making a statement. Follow your heart, not your head. Last in relationships, yeah, okay. Everyone wants it, and me. Honestly, I want us to last. No matter what, I'll keep fighting for our love, as you should know. What time to call this? Half past never. It's more than two hours. I'm sorry. Where have you been, Jeff? Bob. Oh. The ice bar. Bob. Oh. It's only been a few days, but the wheels have fallen off Jeff's wagon. Glass upside down on their fucking time. That's a fight. Oh my god. He thinks he's 20 year old, but he's 55 year old man. He thinks he's fucking Rocky Balboa. And he's not fucking Rocky Balboa. What are you doing in my oven now? You know, I can't wait for him to fuck off back to work. When's it ready, then? About half an hour. Oh, lovely. Are you making the gravy? Oh, here we go. Do you want to make the gravy? Because you make wonderful Danish gravy, don't you? <laughs> then about 50 friggin' Oh, is, is the gravy nice? Is the gravy nice? Oh, everybody, what do you think of the gravy? <laughs> Put on Facebook, Jeffrey Brown has made the gravy. Quick! <laughs> How do I make gravy? How do I make gravy? Right, how do I make gravy? Like everybody else. Does. Where's the gravy granules? I don't need gravy granules. I know how to do other things. It was all the washing. Uh, and the drying. Oh, you And the shopping. Washing and drying. No, yeah. No, that. Who keeps the house in order? Me! <laughs> That's true, Sean, you do partly. And all he does is make a bit of fucking Danish gravy! You know, Queen, Your Majesty, she tries some of Geoffrey's Jane's gravy. Your Majesty. <laughs> Shut up! Hey! I would give you Your Majesty. I'd Don't spread the fucking. fucking... Get out. Yeah. Don't disrespect yeah. the fucking Queen. <laughs> Don't blaspheme the fucking Queen. <laughs> Not being funny now. I know. I know. Don't All disrespect right. the Queen. All right. Do you like the Queen, though? I do like the Queen, yeah. She's our Queen. Everybody should like the Queen. Why? What do you mean, why? We're bloody English, aren't we? God save the Queen! Hi. 
Should we walk our girls like round tonight? Slags. 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 <laughs> Not really. Oh, oh no, yeah. they're all beautiful. Truth is, the women on the East Marsh know all about managing without their men. But everyone's a sucker for a bit of romance. Jazz, just take off all clothes now, downstairs. Why am I going to take all my clothes off downstairs? No, all your top layers, whatever you can leave in the bathroom, leave in the bathroom. Why am I going to get undressed? Because I need you to. Why am I walking out? Because your back's nearly ready, that's why. Right, I'm not walking out in the house naked. Jazz. Not loud in the bedroom yet, anyway. Come on, Theo! It's boring me. Yeah, you're boring me. You're ungrateful. Let me in the bedroom. No. Nope. That's dead sweet. Come here. No, you can't. Not yet. Come give me a cuddle. Check that. What's that, man? That is the best made cappuccino you can think of. Put all this love and affection into you, and you just what fucking, you just act like it's a normal thing. No, I didn't. <sighs> Women do my fucking brain boxing. Oh, bad. I love my cock, me. He's so cute. It really is. For every person who's taken the wrong path, there are many hundreds of others who are struggling, but doing it by the book. When it comes to Christmas time, um, you get a loan, and you make sure your kids have got what everybody else has got, or whatever they want, to give them a good Christmas, and it takes you all year to pay the loan, and then you get another one. I think that's in a lot of places, that's the way we have to live. There just isn't enough money to save up. Like any good fisherman's missus, at home, Becky holds everything together. I could not have asked for a more loving, better father than I've got with my dad. Now her dad's been told there's something wrong with his heart, so Becky's moving him into the spare room. Well, Anybody can be a father, it takes a real man to be a, a dad. You do love your dad. I worship my dad. You respect your father. So what about you? Fred West then? No, I mean, that, well, don't be no, too ridiculous. You're, you're, talk, you're talking silly now. Why am I talking silly? Yeah, the same because we're mothers. Some mothers spears. bloody abandon the kids. What? Every... What are you about bringing spears for? She's a good bloody mother. No, and if she uses her baby as an ashtray. No, she doesn't. No, no, she, she has used her oh, baby. As she has not used her baby yes. as a bloody ashtray. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be so ridiculous. Yeah. Stop being so stupid. No, no. Stan, you've moved in, have you? Just for a few days. A few weeks. I'm not going back tomorrow. <laughs> I found out that he had an enlarged vein in his heart. It could, like, burst at any time. It's a time bomb. So it's a time bomb. You can't choose when you die. You just... When your time's up, your time's up. When God you wants it, you point your finger and you go. You either go up there or down there. I hope I go up there. <laughs> I don't want to be with the devil. Don't touch that bar on that gate. I know who it was, yeah. If you want to change the way you are, just change the way you are. You, never, mind what any, never mind what anybody says about you, or never mind what anybody thinks about you. You're doing something, you've got a big deal. Well, yeah, I've got a fucking eye to eye appointment, fucking try and get me to work at fucking staff force and that. Ryan's troubles aren't behind him yet, but he's still trying to change his future. Today, he's signing up with a local job agency. They just keep putting me back because, I'm like, because of my tag and shit, and I don't see why they're doing it. You know, just because I've got a tag around my ankle, it just don't mean I'm a straight up thug. Fuck, I hate being on the door. Come on then, let's get to it. 
Whoa! Coffee's blowing out my hand and that. Well, they're pushing me forward for everything, basically. I've got to go in uh, Friday for basically a couple of inductions for a couple of different places. My tagging kicks in at five in the morning, right? And then I'm allowed out till like nine at night. Yep, all right, cheers, love. All right, bye, bye, bye. Good news, Ryan? Good news? Fingers crossed, I'm gonna start work by next week. If you want something in life, you've got to get off your ass and get it. Ryan and Shaz have been living in his dad's spare room, but with the chance of some work, they're trying to scrape a bond together for a flat. How are you off guys? Uh, cash converters. After that? Housing place. Before? Get a house. And having somewhere to call home can make all the difference. When I come here, the only thing I had was what I had on. But now, as you can see, I'm building it all back up again. Starting to look healthier. Just everything's starting to look positive. And Corinne and Kaylee's little family is expecting some new additions today. Oh, titties, look at the titties. I think she's in labour. For the first four or five weeks, you don't really see a lot because they're asleep all the time. But when they start opening their eyes and running around and that, they're brilliant. She's a good one. Oh, I know. All right, darling. All right, darling. Push. Push, baby. Push. Anna. Push, baby. Push me. She's a canny. I'm a canny nanny. <laughs> She's a canny and I'm a county. <laughs> Mummy, have a look then, Meanie, now. Why are you happy enough for one? You can't, you can't, you can't put it into words. Oh, you're a oh. little one, aren't you? Hey. All that pain you go through, but once that baby's in your arms, that pain is forgotten. Oh, it's an unbelievable feeling. You can't explain it. We've got all this again, haven't we? Do you know, like, do you know on New Year when you're all celebrating and then fireworks are going off and you're all smiling, your hearts are going and, oh, it's just like one big firework that just doesn't seem to go out. It's amazing. What do you think most people think prostitutes are like? I think they just get a bad reputation for the job. You know? People just take advantage. It's not really a proper fucking job, is it? Selling your body. People have had bad up upbringings, aren't there, some people? That's why they go to drugs for comfort and shit. That's not fucking comfort, that's pain. Some girls get forced into prostitution, don't they? When did you first take drugs? Cannabis when I was nine. In the class A's when I was 12. What class A's? E's, amphetamine, heroin. When did you get heroin when you were 12? I'm not going to say that. Because it could get someone in a lot of trouble. What do you think life without drugs would be like? I've done it for four years with my, with my two boys. And it was fantastic. I wanted their lives to be totally different to my life. Totally different. I want to get clean so I can make all my wrongs right. It's easy to get stuck in the past 
especially when the present ain't great. Where's this then, Jeff? Where are we off there? The square. With no work on the boats and time on his hands, the closest Jeff can get to a trip out to sea is back at his place with his old fishing mates. What's the square, Jeff? The graveyard of good fishermen. <laughs> That's on the Philip Bowen. Thought it was, I'll just see Tom. Yeah, that's yeah, when we're doing the tuna fishing. That's right. Yeah. Oh, there's a bit of weather. Yeah. That's not all. Which one's missing? The Challenger. The Challenger. Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty terrifying, some of those seas. Well, it's better than being a miner, isn't it? I'll tell you, I'll get claustrophobic going down one of them things. I shouldn't be on the deck myself personally. What do you think the, the people of Grimsby think of the fishing? We were just drunk and old bastard. The parties was better than the fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Hence we get the fucking reputation of being drunken bastards. <laughs> I'll do it all again. You've got memories, I can never take them away from you, can I? Just suck. Yeah, fucking barber, isn't he, Dane? Loves it. I will go back to sea. And I will say you'll run seas again, off the shore. Lost me life. You're a predator, you've got to catch the fish. Your wife's got to be right, everything's got to be right. There's that much going on that you ain't got time to think about anything. Else. Ryan doesn't want to get stuck in his past. He's taken Shaz on a day trip out of Grimsby, to see how she likes the countryside. Fucking bullshit. Well, aren't you a moody little bitch? Moody? You've brought me to, it's not even like, there's lots of ducks or there's a park or woods or anything. Should we jump in? Or off for a swim? We'll jump in. <laughs> Come on then. Come down here. I bet you go dipping. Come on then. Fuck well, I'll, yeah. I'll fight with you down here. Silly. I bet Piss you go off. in. What's nice about here? Um, the lake, the the schools are nice. Schools are pretty good. <laughs> um, it's just a quiet little town, really. Good if you want to settle down, basically. Oh, stop being grumpy, woman. What is there really to see? What? What fun is there we can do here? Not much. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is my point I'm making, mate. It is crap. Yeah, it's because you didn't live this any of these lives. The fuck would I want to live this life for? Why the fuck would I want to live a life? Obviously, there is an evil side to me. Obviously, onto my enemies and that, yeah. I have got a good side to me as well. Which side do you, do you prefer, Ryan? I don't know how I am really made that decision yet. Have you got any regrets? No. No regrets. But the future is hurtling towards Ryan and Shaz in a way neither of them could ever imagine. Sometimes, life makes no sense to anyone. With only a few weeks to go before Ryan's trial, he and Shaz went for an early morning joyride with some mates. Fleeing from police post, Ryan and Shaz were infracted his shoulder. Shaz wasn't so lucky.
Five days after the crash, Shaz is still in intensive care. She's broken her neck and is almost completely paralyzed. Right, how is she? Um, she's stable at the minute. Um, everything's going fine, operation and everything's gone fine. Um, she's awake. She's waiting to talk. But obviously she's got a, a tube and that in her throat, so at the minute she she can't talk because obviously it's helping her breathe and everything. It's hard to leave and now she's awake and because obviously every time I like leave and that she watches me leave and it looks like she she still wants me there, but I can't do nothing because I'm on fucking tag and it's horrible. It is truly fucking horrible. Fucking bullshit. See, it says a lot for all them fucking job interviews and shit, doesn't it? What do you mean? I would have been already at work and I know my baby girl wouldn't have gone fucking nowhere without me. So if I would have had fucking work, then how I look at it, fucking this wouldn't have happened. You're regretting your lifestyle a bit, man. Yep. I regret a lot of things in my life now. Could have done this, could have done that. There's no work. There is no work for them young boys. There's nothing for them to do. So what do they look at? Why? That's what it's all about. We, we went to sea on these boats and just here now, doing nothing. This is one of the ships I used to go on, this Gilnetter. It's a trawler, it doesn't troll no more, no quota. I feel for the young ones, got no to do, no to look at. When the old jobs go, it can open the floodgates for all sorts of other things. Some people get the new jobs. Others get caught in the riptide of drugs, crime or prostitution. Both Kaylee's grandfathers were fishermen. This is how it is, look. The dirty old buggers. They'll stop and ask me the price, tell them the price. And if I say yeah, I get in. If I say no, I come back to my spot and wait for the next customer. Are they always old buggers? No. Get some dead nice looking ones. It's worse though when they're young and good looking. You feel so uncomfortable. What's your name? I don't know, you just I don't know. I just go all giddy and I'm like, Yes, sir, no, sir, feedback's full, sir. Do you think they come because they want love? No, they just want a shag. Just want to shoot them up. Get the job done and that's it, see you later. No. I don't get close to them, I don't tell them anything about myself. I just do what they want me to do when I'm gone. And that's the best and easiest way to do it. Time and tide wait for no man. And sometimes, no matter what's happened, you just have to keep going.
Why are you having to be in house anyway, Aaron? Because Dad's being evicted. Because not paying his fucking bedroom tax and shit like that. Are you sad to be leaving here, Aaron? <sighs> yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, and no. You don't go in prison thinking that something bad's going to happen and that you're going to beat everybody up. To see her in a temper, it's like watching the Incredible Hulk. I am signing on today because of the Polish or Latvian bastards down there are taking my way. You're a horrible person. Fuck her. Come on. <laughs> I've got some DVDs to sell. Fuck it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>